Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, I mean, praise him like you really mean it. It's first Sunday. Isn't he good? Isn't the Lord great?
somebody ever worship God? Wait a minute to take a 10 second break and give God glory. Somebody ought to worship you. You ought to worship them. Come, come, worship. We came here to worship the Lord. Come, come on, come on. Wake these boundaries up. Come on. This ain't no, this ain't no pep rally. We worship him. If he's been good to you, if he's been good to you, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Come. Come on. This is Great for Young Zion Baptist Church, 405 South Barbara Road. Come on. Worship his holy name. Worship his holy name. Worship his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continuously be in my mouth. He's done great things for me. I'm standing here today because he's done great things. Amen. Welcome to Great Ends. This is our call to worship. I am associate minister of Great Ends Zion. I am the Paul, Reverend Paul Reeves Jr. And I'm a disciple of this church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 My God, my God, our responsive reading. Mm. Mm. He's been good to me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. 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 Hallelujah. By what common and gracious experience do we enter into spiritual covenant relations with God and each other? What is our obligation towards this, our own church? To strive for the advancement of the church, and knowledge of the holiness and comfort, to promote the prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, or its existence and What vows do we gladly make as stewards of that which God has entrusted to us? To be the church. What obligations do we assume towards each other? We engage, therefore, to walk by the aid of the Holy Spirit in Christian love. For the sake of the, our homes and our loved ones, what glorious tasks do we humbly assume? We engage, therefore, to maintain family and secret devotions, to educate and reduce our children, and to seek the salvation of our kingdom and families. For the sake of the unsaved, we pledge to what matter of life and conversation. To all service and in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our patience, and as in a prayer in our importance, to avoid all bad feelings, bad fighting, and excessive anger, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. 
in what matter should the Christian church look upon that which could bring mental and bodily injury? Since we are brothers and sisters in the Lord, by what fraternal behavior are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teaching of our Savior? We are to remember each other in prayer, help each other to seek and distress, cultivate Christian sympathy, healing, courtesy and speech, slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior. What are we to do when we away from the community of our church, which makes it somewhat impossible to attend regularly. We more open and engaged, that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen, amen, amen. Here's our prayer list. Today we're praying for Sister, Sister Susie Hansberry, who was Please, from who was released from the hospital last Sunday and is home recuperating. Amen. Sister Darlene Huggins, Amen. who is home after surgery. Her, her along Amen. with Deacon Huggins, they are recuperating at home. Brother Albert Hunter, who has been placed in ICU in the VA. Um, Mr. Hunter is the husband of Sister Sheila Hunter, who is, the, who is in Walton Rehab as well. Mrs. Ozella Johnson, the sister of Brother Troy Johnson. She's in MCG battling cancer. Mr. Jerome Smith, the cousin of Sister Stephanie Kirk, who is battling bone cancer. Barbara Fawley, the sister of Robert Fawley, who is battling cancer. Mr. Aaron Hines, brother of Reverend Curtis Hines, who is battling cancer. Um, brother David Cheatham, my uncle, he's been released from rehab, but he's also battling cancer. Sister Jeanette Page and family in the passing of her brother, Jimmy Hampton, on last Wednesday. Sister Charlotte Gaines and the entire family in the passing of her mother, Mother Bonnie Davison, on last Wednesday. And Sister Gail Hurd, the entire family in the passing of her of Gail's sister, Susan, Su Suzanne, on yesterday. Let us pray. Father, we come to you as humble as we know how, thanking you for life, health, and strength, understanding that this is thy will, not our will. So, Father, we just put it on the tree. All our worries, all our concerns, all our efforts, Father, we know not what we do. So, Father, we come to you just as you have instructed. Lead us, Lord, guide us, help us, hold us in every good and perfect way. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to read a card to you. Please be seated. Reverend Blunt. Grady Young Zion family, thank you for establishing and keeping the Ernestine Bell Grady Young Zion Scholarship to Payne College annually in the honors of me for 40 years of service to the college. You have been consistent in providing this scholarship of $1,000 of more each year for more than 20 years. Sister Ernestine Bell. I'm a product of what we're bound, by the way. Amen. Next, we'll have a selection by the Sanctuary Choir. This morning, good morning, good morning. Reverend R. Reeves, he read off a lot of things that our family is going through. Cancer is a beast. And as people say, life be life. But I know God be God in too. And we feel for everyone who is 
going through this right now. But we also know that Psalms 30 and 5 tell us that weeping may be endured for the night. But joy comes in the morning. The joy of Lord comes in the morning. So whatever you're going through, just trust in God. Because our pastor tells us as long as we're with God, heads or tails, we win. So I want y'all to lift up your voices. Praise God and sing this song with us because trouble don't last always. It don't. We're going to have joy in the morning regardless of what you're going through, saints. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Do it night, but joy, joy. 
man, Lord have mercy. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. I said somebody give God a hand clap of praise in here. Uh, Psalm 150 says praise you the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the string instruments and the organs. Praise him with the temporal and the dance. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise you, the Lord. I'm excited today. GYZ is April. April is music, ministry, emphasis, month. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah, somebody here. Hallelujah. If you want to join the choir, see me or one of those illustrious choir members behind me. Give it up for this choir. If you want to grab a bulletin, make sure you see Brother Jeff and his staff. Or go out to the men in the women's table out and it'll give you all the information on how to join. You can be seated. Uh, give you all the information how to see uh, um, our youth advisors to join our third Sunday choir, which is the Sunbeam Choir, the Teen Choir, male chorus members see me directly, or oh, Brother Sweat, my guy. You know, listen, we are excited and delighted to be here today. My task is simple. Thank you. My task is simple. Do we have any visitors this morning? If we do, please stand. Do we have any visitors coming to GYZ for the first time this morning? Oh, well my brother and my sister, you are at home. Listen, we thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Miss GYZ, what is our saying? Strangers, only friends who haven't met. Y'all give our new friends a, a reception the way GYZ does. Welcome. Everybody got troubles, but they don't last always. Amen. Amen. Hey, our trustees come for our offering. Amen. Morning, Grady, I'm Zion. Good morning. This is one of the better times of the morning time to give. It said, Give and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And the same measure that you use will be measured back unto you. What we'd like for everyone to do now, we'd like for the two outside pews to stand and face the wall, the two inside pews to stand and face each other. Then the overflow will come down with the assistance of the ushers. May we all stand. Thank you. 
Has anybody been omitted? Signify by raising your hands and the trustees will come to you. May we all stand for prayer. Let us pray. Father, again, we come to do our job and say thank you. Thank you for allowing us a portion to do what we need to do for the kingdom of heaven. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Willie Mae Harris just had a fall, so we're going to lift her up in prayer. And also Thursday. Okay. And also my mother, Sister Mary Lou Reeves, she's having back surgery in the morning. So we're going to lift them up in prayer. In the words of the nature boy, Ric Flair, now we go to school. It's preaching time. We have a pastor that's on fire for 41 years. And Lord, have mercy. Get ready, get ready, get ready. After the choir saying the next voice you will hear is our brother, our friend, the pastor of the Greater Young Zion Baptist Church, 405 Sandbar Ferry Road. Get ready. Get ready for your first Sunday message, and you know he's going to bring it. Hear ye, hear ye. Good God Almighty, it's a blessing to have Bridget Stevens back with us, y'all.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it prove to be acceptable in your sight. Uh, for Lord, you are my strength, and Lord, you are indeed my redeemer. And this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let us all say together, amen. Let's give God praise and worship this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This is our music emphasis month here at GYZ. And we're going to be talking about the entire month. God, will you help me when I'm hurting? <laughs> God, will you help me when I'm hurting? Amen. I want to talk about this morning how God uses our pain. How God uses our pain. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 2 and 8. And First Thessalonians 2 and verse number 8. And Paul writes to this church, he says, I'm affectionately desiring on you. For we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also of our own souls. Because you were so dear to us. Paul said, what it cost me. But it's called, the, you know what that's called? It's called the incarnational gospel. Because you're preaching about what is happening to yourself. Amen. Maybe seated in the presence of God. God uses my pain and he uses my pain for my good. Paul talks about his pain. Throughout the book, man, he talks about his pain. Throughout the book, all these guys, they talk about their pain. We live in a broken world. We're going to have pain. It's going to happen. And the problem is that most people hate pain. They hate pain. They really hate it. But what you need to understand that God has a ministry for your pain. Oh, my God. Amen. He has a ministry, what? For your pain. No matter who we are, no matter what we're going through in our life, we all of us got different kinds of pain. You can have emotional pain. You can have financial pain. You can have spiritual pain. You can have, uh, you know, all kinds of situational pains. You can have relational pains. All of these things can be a part of your life, but you're going to have pain. And what, as believers in the kingdom, remember that what, what, what God told us in Philippians 4.4, 4, he says, what, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. He says always. Always. Amen. And we know this, that everything may not always be good, but everything going to work together for good. To those that love the Lord. The Bible said that we are believers. We're, yeah, we live in the world, but we don't live of the world. So we, can, we come and we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I mean, all those scriptures, man. But how do you deal with the pain? How do we understand pain? How do we have it without it having us? So there's a ministry in pain. And I'm going to give you five, five ministries that pain would do in your life. Amen? And after each one of them, I want you to be able to get on your feet and thank God for the pain. Oh, my God. Amen? Yeah, thank God for the pain. Okay? Here's number one. I want you to write this down. God uses our pain to guide and direct us. God uses our pain to guide and direct us. Amen? And what do you mean by that? God uses our pain to change the direction of our lives. Some of you have never would have changed the direction of your life if you had not had some pain. Amen? Pain would make you leave stuff that you should have left long before. But it took some pain, amen, to make you put that joke out, to make you move on from that relationship, 
it took some pain. The friendship was over with a long time ago, but God allowed pain to change the direction of that. Look at Proverbs 16, 9. 16, 9. A man's heart devises his way, but it's the Lord that's directing his steps. So whether you make good choices or bad choices or good things or bad things, don't worry about it. If you are a saved person in Jesus Christ, the sovereignty of God is guaranteeing you one thing, that God is directing your situation. He could take the crazy things in your life and still direct your situation. He could take the mistakes of your life and still be directing your situation. Somebody said, thank God for pain. Oh, my God. Amen. Look how bad that stuff would have got if a pain had come. And you said, I had to get off my behind and go to the doctor. And you went this in the nick of time and changed around. Pain would change your direction. So now God uses the word. He wants us to, he wants to be able to change by the word of God. He says, what man don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But when we don't listen to the word, then God brings in some pain. Mm. Mm. Amen. We done got too cute to worship. And God said, I got some pain that'll change that direction. Amen. <laughs> I got some pain where you don't care who looking at you. You don't care. You don't care how your makeup is or what your hair looks like. You don't care how you act when you shout. When you've been through enough pain, God has changed your direction because of the pain in your life. Paul said, now I rejoice. Paul said, not that you were made sorry. I'm not rejoicing because y'all went what y'all went through. But I am rejoicing that God directed you to repentance. Because if it had not been for that pain, you would have never changed your mind about that sin. Amen. And here it is, man. I don't know about you, but I don't have some painful experiences in my life that turned my direction of my life. And that it had not happened to me then guess what? I've had some painful experiences in my life. Brother Barry can testify. You can have some painful experiences when you get through paying the speeding tickets and get through paying that high insurance and you get through the pain, it'll change your direction. You'll put on your cruise control. You'll learn how to slow down a little bit. Somebody said, thank God for the pain. Oh, God, have mercy, man. Got to do it. I said, God will do it. Yeah, look what David said about pain. He said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn your statutes. If it had not been for the pain, it would not have changed my life. It would not have scraped me up. It would not have made me do a lot better. It had not been for the pain in my life. Now I ain't cute and sitting down in church. And act like I don't want to praise him. I'm going to praise him if nobody else praise him. Because you don't understand, it was the pain that changed my life. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? Do I have about at least 10 people in here to be able to testify if it had not been for the Lord? Pain just wasn't my misery. Pain was my ministry. Because it changed the direction of my life. Oh, my God. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. Here's number two. I want you to write down number two. So now number one, the pain will what? Will guide you and direct you. But pain will do something else. It will goad you and correct you. Not, not listen, listen. Now, Pastor, what do you mean by gold? G O A D. I know y'all looking at me strange when I say that word. It means motivate. Motivate. See, sometimes God uses pain to motivate you in order to correct you. It's almost like raising children. You have to understand how that works. There are two things in raising a kid it's punishment and correction. It's punishment and correction. Punishment is to penalize them for something they've done in the past. 
correction is to train them for what needs to happen in the future. So it's not just punishment. You also look for correction. Look at what Proverbs 20 and 30. It said, the blueness of a womb would cleanse away evil. Wow. <laughs> the blueness of a womb will motivate you to get some stuff out of your life. Amen. Amen. When you look at how much this hurt me, oh my God, amen. How much this hurt me, guess what? It'll change. And say, man, I got to stop this. I got to stop this, amen. I got to stop this. When you look at overweight and it's causing you with diabetes and all these other problems you're having, then you say, man, I got to push back from the table. I got to push back. I got to push back. I, I can't eat this no more. I can't do this no more. I need to get back to exercising. Sometimes you need to get wounded. Oh, my God. <laughs> the wound will get rid of the evil. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? We'll get rid of the evil. Some of you, it takes that kind of thing that happened in your life. And so Proverbs 20 and 30, I like Proverbs 20 and 30. Go to 2 Corinthians. And 2 Corinthians, what he says about that as well. Because when you look at the fact of what direction that pain, excuse me, Proverbs 20 and 30, what direction that pain really does to you. Okay? Now, let me go back to this part about punishment and correction. When you really want to help a child, it's not just important to punish them. It's important to correct them. Amen. <laughs> because I'm not only going to penalize you for what you've done. I want to show you what you need to do. And so as kingdom people, stop going around saying God is punishing me. No, God does not punish believers. He don't punish believers, amen. He don't punish believers. You know, why am I going through what I'm going through? You're going through what you're going through because it's the consequences of what you're doing. It's not the devil. It's not the devil. The devil's still messing with me. The devil's not messing with you at all. It's that you got a choice, and the consequences of your choices is what you're dealing with. Does that say that? How many of you have asked the Lord to bless you? Okay. How many of you don't realize that God has already done it? When you get saved, God gives you all of his blessings. Oh, my God. That's what Ephesians 1.3 says, that God has given us all spiritual blessings. Why are you asking for more? He said, I've already given you all. And those blessings, how do you get them? By obedience. The blessing comes in the obedience. The what? God's not uh, punishing you. The punishment comes with the disobedience. The consequences come out of the disobedience. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. So don't blame God for what you're going through. Don't blame God. You know? The devil is working against my marriage. No, he's not working against your marriage. You're working against your marriage because you won't obey. You're the one doing it. The devil got my lights cut off. No, he didn't. You didn't pay the bill. That's got your lights cut off. <laughs> listen, people. Listen, people. The devil does not attack you when you're doing wrong. The devil attacks you when you're doing right. And so therefore, you got to live a righteous life to have an encounter with the devil. Most of you in here ain't never had no encounter with no devil. And the devil ain't got to mess with you because you already making the bad choices. <laughs> oh, I wish I had somebody to be able to testify. And that's why you can say, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I'm the one standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama, not my daddy, not my sister, not my brother, not a church member. Lord, it's me. That great prophet Michael Jackson said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. And I'm telling him he need to change his way. 
Oh, my God. Amen. Remember they used to say this a long time ago? That finger you point at me, there are three other fingers pointing right back at you. That's the way it works, baby. That's the way it works. So God doesn't punish us. Why? Because sin has already been punished. If God punishes you, the punishment for sin is death. The wages of sin is death. How many of you want him to punish you? No, he's not punishing you. He is correcting you. And I give you pain in your life because I'm trying to correct you. I'm trying to motivate you to correct you. That's what God is doing. Look at Hebrews 12 and 8. He said, if we be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It means you're illegitimate. Let me tell you something. You see some kids playing out on the play yard? Some kids playing on the play yard? Amen. You don't, you don't chastise all these children. But if you see yours out there. Amen. I see people cut up in the supermarket. But if my kid cut up, then that's a whole different ball game. See, God treats you different when you're a son. Oh, my God. Amen. This is why we used to do stuff and it didn't used to bother us. But now we do a little bit of something and God gets all over us. How many of you had a funny feeling go all over you when you even think about doing what you got to do? Because God said, are you my child? You're my child. I'm not going to let you get away with anything because I'm trying to correct you. And I thank God that God has done something to motivate me because he was trying to correct me. Furthermore, we had fathers of the flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Said we not much what? Rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits so that we can live. Oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Amen. And this is what the Bible is teaching us, man, that God uses pain because he's trying to motivate us. Because there's something in our life he's trying to correct us from. Amen. He let those crazy men get a hold to you because he's trying to correct you. He's trying to correct you. Because here's the thing I've learned in life. The best way to get what you want is to be what you want. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? The best way to get what you want is that you got to be what you want. The best way, the best way for God to give you a good friend, then you got to be the friend that you want God wants to give you. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? The best way you have good people in your life is to be a good person yourself. When you're a good person yourself, then God can trust you with that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But if you ain't right yourself, God would put people in your life. You think you're slick, but some other folk are slicker than you are. You think you're smart, but some other folk are smarter than you are. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? And God said, when I get, when they get through with you, they gonna straighten you up. When you get the whooping that you need to get, you gonna straighten up. So somebody in the building today ought to be able to stand up and testify and say, thank you, God, for the pain that you put in my life that motivated me. Pain will motivate you. Oh, my God. Hmm. Ministry, man. Ministry. Ministry of the pain, man. So number one, man, thank God for the pain because the pain, Al, that guided and directed me, it's a pain that changed my direction that I was taking my life in. And God, I thank God for that. Thank God for the pain that goaded me and corrected me. It's the pain that motivated me to bring the right changes in my life. Thank God for that. Here's the third one. Thank God for the pain that guarded me 
and inspected me. <laughs> Thank God for the pain that gave me the right view of myself. Thank God for the pain that tested my character. Oh, man. Thank God for the pain that made me realize I ain't what I thought I was. Thank God for the pain that brought me down when I thought more highly of myself than I ought to have thought of myself. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Look at Job 7 and 18. He said, and thou should visit him every morning and try him every morning. Good God. He says, God will visit you every morning and God will test you every moment. Everything that's happening in your life is a test. It is testing you so that you can see what's really in you. That's what God is saying. He wants you to see what's wrong with you, what's right with you. And she said, I got to test you. Go to Jeremiah 17 and 10. Oh, my God. He said, I am the Lord. And I'm the one that shuts your heart. And I'm going to test you by the reins. That means I'm going to be in charge of everything that's going to happen to you. Even to give every man according to his own ways and according to the fruit of your own doings. God says, I'm going to test you. I like Isaiah 84. And not for student Isaiah 48 and 10. He said, behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. God said, I have put heat in your life so that you can see who you really are. And let me tell you something that God would do to you. He would affect you in three different ways in your life. He would test you in three different ways in your life. Some of it is personal. God would test you and you can't tell nobody about your test. Because it's personal. And there are people in here, they look all right. They shout all right. They praise all right. But they got some personal challenges that's going on in your life. It hurts. You cry by yourself. Um, now, maybe I need to talk to some people over here. <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's like when a hymn writer said, nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows some of the sorrow that's going on in my heart. Nobody knows some of the pain that is happening in life. That's why stop judging people. Because you don't know nobody else's journey. Stop trying to defend yourself to other folk. Because some folk just don't know your journey. They don't know where you come from. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know the troubles that you had. So tell you what, just go ahead and let people talk, let people criticize, let people judge you to shut up because you don't know my story. When I look at people and how they behave, I don't ask what's wrong. I ask what happened. If you knew what happened to me, then you'll know why I ask the way I do. You got a dog that loves to bite? You need to ask yourself one question. Wonder what happened to that dog. 
And when that dog was a puppet, they kept pulling his tail. They kept activating that dog. And now that he got grown, he said, I'm biting everything I can see. You don't understand, people. We need to shut up and stop judging people and just pray for people because you don't understand the personal challenges that they go gone through. Somebody in church this morning and nobody know what kind of night you had last night. What kind of week you had this week. What kind of pain you suffered through last night. How long it took you to put your clothes on today just to make your way to the house of God. Many of you in here right now, you're praising God, but you're still in pain. You got your hands lifted up, but you're still in pain. Are y'all hear what I'm telling you today? Don't, 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 don't. You're able to pass the test of pain. It shows you how mature you are. You were able to pass the test of pain. Oh, my God. Amen. It shows you how much God is in your character. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. And so, therefore, you look at this idea of pain. Amen. So, some of it is personal. It is personal. Some of it is pressure. You know, a lot of people live on a lot of pressure. When there's something going on in your life and you don't know how to fix it. And there's something going on in your life and you don't even know who to talk to anymore. See, some people don't understand that a lot of folk in here today, they deal with so much pressure in your life. And this happened, man. This has happened. And God brings pressure in your life. He brings it in your life to test you. To test your character. The third thing he does, man, is with people. God will test you with people. He will test you with people. That's why it really irks me when I hear people talking about each other and criticizing each other and talking about who ain't this or, or talking about who ain't that. Honey, baby, that's your test. That is your test. I told you before, people do not destroy you. People define you. How you respond to people doesn't say nothing about them. It says something about you. If somebody makes you custom out, they just uncover your spiritual deficiency. If someone that makes you act crazy, they just discover your mental deficiency. That means you've been crazy all along. It just took another crazy person to make you see who you are. Ain't nobody know what I'm saying. God uses people. He uses people. I don't get caught up. I tell him all the time, Bear, you hear me teach this hundreds of times. Don't get caught up in the personalities of people that you deal with. And, and y'all talking about who gets on your neck. Who's supposed to be getting on your neck? You gave them permission to get on your neck. Why you make anybody that important? I don't make anybody in my life that important. Why you give value to people who are not valuable? Why well, I'm going to let you aggravate me and you don't stay with me? Why well, I'm going to make you aggravate me and you ain't paying a bill? Why well, I'm going to let you aggravate me when I don't even see you till I come to church? And I ain't even got to sit next to you. I can find me another seat. I need to cut out this foolishness. Making people more important than they really are. You just got to know how to ignore some things. Stop investing and in making things important. It ain't really that important. Or tell somebody, say, hey, it ain't really that important to me. What you say about me, what you think about me, how you criticize me, it ain't really that important to me. Because when you're secure in your own skin, you know who you are. 
You know your rights. You know your wrongs. You know your strengths. You know your weaknesses. You don't need nobody to validate you. You don't need nobody to validate who you are. You already know who you are. I love Jesus for that. He didn't wait on nobody to tell him who he was. He told himself who he was. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the good shepherd. Oh my God, amen. If God loves me, and I love me, it don't really matter how you feel about me. <laughs> y'all hear what I'm saying? Um, y'all hear what I'm saying? Because you better learn how to bless yourself. You better learn how to lay hands on yourself. You better learn how to speak good about yourself. That ain't conceit, baby. That's confidence. And only insecure people cannot handle that. Tell somebody, take me or leave me. Baby, it really don't matter. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? If you close the door, God will open the window. God always got somebody else. If you decide you don't want to be my friend, that's okay. But I guarantee you, I won't be friendless. If you don't decide to feed me, that's okay. But I can guarantee you, I won't be hungry. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you don't give me a ride, that's okay. But I guarantee you, God going to give me some transportation. Somebody ought to thank God today. Stop all your whining. Stop letting people spoil your spirit. <laughs> Stop letting anybody ruin your day. You ain't got that much power to ruin my day. Amen? Because when you don't like what you're looking at, then turn your head and look at something else. <laughs> I tell you, you got to have a turn your head ministry. Amen? If looking at you making me depressed, I got something else I can look at. I am not going to sit down like a fool being upset at a movie. Y'all sit there all that crying at a movie. This movie really getting me upset. What if it got you that upset? Turn the channel. You can always look at something else. God will test you. God will test you. you. You don't understand. You'll never find out that Jesus is all you, you need until Jesus is all you have. And he is my sufficiency. Amen? You know what I, Let me tell you what you do with your critics. Let them watch you get blessed. <laughs> you go ahead and talk all you want, honey. Just keep, 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 keep watching. Keep tuning in. Keep, keep tuning in. Keep tuning in. Amen. Tell somebody what you've been reading is chapter three. But see, I'm on chapter six now. And what you need to do is turn the page. If you turn the page, you'll see another chapter. Anybody know people love to read your past? But they need to get an update on your present. Ooh. Go tell somebody, you, baby, you need to turn the page. You going back 20 years, that was chapter 1. I'm on chapter 25. And God is still writing the book. The book ain't finished yet. Tell somebody, I said the book ain't finished yet. I said the book ain't finished yet. God's still writing the page. Mm. 
uses that pain, man. He uses that pain. Because God is gauging you. And God is inspecting you. And that's what he did to Israel. It only took a month to walk from the wilderness to the promised land. One month. By walking. One month. 30 minutes if they were flying. They didn't have no airplane back then. <laughs> so they had to walk. But wonder why they stayed 40 years. There it is right there. Deuteronomy 8 2. Hope I'm not boring y'all today. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Why did he do it? He said, I did it to humble you. I did it for you to start looking at me and stop looking at yourself. But he said, and I did it to test you, to test you, to know what was in your own heart. That's why it's taking you so long to get to where you're going because you keep failing tests. God said, I'm testing you. I'm testing you. That's why you done been through five relationships because every time he tests you in one, you still don't get it. So he sent back a retest. Different face, different color, different hair, different shape, same situation. So every time he tested Israel and Israel didn't, take, didn't pass the test, God said, take another lap around the desert. Take another lap. <laughs> every time I lap you around the desert and y'all still ain't got it and you still ain't praising me and you still ain't thanking me and you still won't obey me, take another lap. God said, you could have been where you're going much quicker than what it took you. But because you didn't learn to humble me and because you didn't pass the test, God said, take another lap. <laughs> God said, I'm trying to test you to see where you keep my commandments or where you don't. So God uses pain. Somebody said, thank God for the ministry of pain. God done brought some pain to guide me because he's trying to change my direction. Yeah. That's what stopped some of y'all from smoking, stopped you from, from, from smoking weed. When stuff start going bad, them doctors and reports, you change your direction. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Amen. That's... That's what got Barry off Oreos. God would look at some stuff, man. He'll look at some stuff to change your direction. How many of y'all know he'll change your direction? How many of y'all know he'll change your direction? How many of y'all know he'll slow you behind down? He'll tell you to come on home and sit down with yourself. Sit down. So he, he uses pain to guide you and direct you. He uses pain to goad you because he's correcting you. He uses pain to gauge you because he's inspecting you. That's all. It ain't as bad as you think it is. Amen? It ain't as bad as you think it is. But don't it make you change some things in your life? Change your diet. Change the way you eat. Man, diabetes changed some things in my life. You tell me about diabetes, man. I don't, you don't play with diabetes. You don't play with diabetes. And the doctor said to me, we're going to put you on some metformin. I said, no, I ain't taking no medicine. He said, what you going to do with it? I changed my diet. I changed the way I eat. He said, well, you're going to miss some good food. I said, I ain't missing nothing. 
Now, if you tell me I can't eat nothing, that's the problem. But as long as there's something else to eat, oh, my God. I had a dog once. When I first moved here, I lived on Gerald Lane. And um, the kids found a German shepherd. And this lady owned the shepherd, German shepherd and raised him from a puppy. And she just couldn't keep the dog in the morning. The kids begged me, Dad, get that German shepherd. Dad, get that German shepherd. So I went over and got the dog. All right, I went and got the dog. The lady left specific instructions that the dog only eat it. apple. See, I grew up in the country where the dog ate whatever your scraps was. But these dogs done got uppity and sophisticated. <laughs> and she, she talking about he don't eat bones. Now, he don't eat no bones. What? He don't eat table scraps. What? He needs to eat alpo. So my son and I, we went to, went to the store and looked at a bag of alpo. And it was like a little bag. It was no big bag. $12.95. I said, oh, no, man. I ain't paying that much for no dog. He ain't working nowhere. <laughs> See, I grew up in a household. You didn't make requests for food. You ate whatever they fixed. I mean, mama didn't come out and say, what y'all want to eat today? We never had no choice. So here you got this eight ounce bag of apple for $12.95. But I went out a little further, I saw some fuel and trail. $3.99. And it had a little yellow doggy bowl that was inside the bag. I told my son, no, no, no. We go with daddy, he won't eat nothing but apple. He's a dog. <laughs> Y'all had to learn how to eat collard greens and cabbages. Ain't no dog going to tell me what he going to eat. Now, I went and got that field of trail. Man, I had a nice little doggy bowl in there. He said, you going to feed him at the doggy bowl, Daddy? I said, no. Put some newspaper down. That doggy bowl is your cereal dish. <laughs> I ain't got no dog, he got no bowl. He's the dog. <laughs> That's your ice cream dish. Hey, Amen. Take a magic marker, put your name on it, put your name on it, sir. And I put that feeling trail out there. And sure enough, he didn't eat it. All day long, he wouldn't eat. They, Dad, he going to die. He's not going to die. The second day, he didn't eat it. But he probably realized he was living in an anointed household. And my kids were praying for him. But early on the third day, he got up. <laughs> I ate all that feeling trail. I said, he would test you. He would test you. He would test you. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And diabetes made me get an appetite for stuff that I would not normally love to eat. But guess what, Doc? I eat it all now. Amen. 
My A1C went down from 13 to 6. <laughs> Amen. And there's somebody in here who could testify that God did some things in your life. He did some things in your life. And if nobody else want to say nothing about him, you can stand up and say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Our toes, won't he do it? Won't he do it? This is music emphasis, Mike. Black folk could take a 45 and turn it to a 78. Some of y'all ain't old enough to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he will guide you and direct you. He will goad you and motivate you. He will gauge you because he's inspecting you. Amen? Inspecting. It's the, it's the fourth thing. It's the fourth thing. It's the fourth thing. It's the fourth thing. He will guard you to protect you. God will stand guard because he's trying to protect you. He's really trying to protect you. He's trying to protect Look at Psalm 91 and 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. You know what he mean by that? God says, I'm going to stand guard over you. Because there are traps are being set for you. And they're hidden. You don't even see it. That's why he didn't let that guy call back that you wanted. And you say he act like he didn't want you. But God said, he looked good, but it's a trap. And what I did was guard you to keep you from being trapped. <laughs> that's why. That's why I told that joker to get up in the middle of the night and leave you and don't ever come back. Because you thought you lost something, but that, that joker was nothing but a trap. And sometimes you're finding out in somebody else's life and you say, whew, thank God he saved me from that. But y'all hear what I'm telling you? I ran into one of my old classmates, old girlfriend, when I was in high school, and I was crazy about it. We were even talking about getting married one time. I was really crazy about it, really crazy about it. And so I was in Walmart, and I heard her call my name. And I knew it had to be somebody from my hometown, because nobody in my home, everybody in my hometown called me Bruce. That's my middle name. And I heard her scream, Bruce! I said, that's somebody from my from my hometown, and I turned around, and I saw this gigantic woman. <laughs> With just one tooth, what's one right here. And she had the snuff in her mouth. She said, bruise. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you don't remember me? I'm your old girlfriend. And I said, God, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm glad he stood God over that and didn't let me fall into that. Come on now, be real now, be real now, be real now, be real now. Had the Lord rescued you for some stuff? Had the Lord get, make sure you didn't get involved? It's something you want to get involved in because God knows you will be nothing but in a Job 36 and 16 he said even so would he have removed thee out of the scrape and to a broad place where there is no scrapeness that which should be set on thy table should be full of fatness God will move you out of your place 
so he can put you in the right place. Think about the woman you're married to right now. You can. Think about the woman you're married to. Now think about all the sisters you had in your life before you met her. Aren't you glad that God guarded you? Okay, 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 okay. I'm still, I'm still praising God. I, I'm Barry, I'm still, I, I, I'm a man. I'm 100%. I've been 100% man all my life. Amen. Amen. And you know what? I've had women in my life. And you done had some. And you done had some. Amen. And you ought to be praising God with all the women you had that you have as little babies as you have. Because God had to guard you so that you can fall into a trap. Uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go a little bit deeper. Of all the whoredom you've done, praise God that he guarded you from AIDS. Guarded you from some serious diseases that it had not been for the grace of God. Only by his grace. I say only by his grace. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Talk to me now. Talk to me now. It was a God who guarded you and protected you. <laughs> God will do it. And it's amazing to mind how he lets us go through the pain and the stuff that we go through. But look how God worked it out. Look at all the hitting and missing and hitting and missing and hitting and missing and then bullseye. Look how God worked it out. David had 40, I mean Joseph had 40 years of pain. What his brothers did to him because his father, he was his father's favorite because he was a child that was actually born from the woman that he really loved. Because you got to remember with Jacob, he wanted Rachel. Beautiful Rachel. Amen. And he agreed to work seven years just to get that woman. Some of y'all don't want to work seven minutes. But he wanted to work seven years just to get that woman. And what happened is, you know, on wedding dates, you didn't get to see your bride's face. Your bride was heavily veiled. And so he thought he was getting Rachel. But when he pulled the veil up, he didn't understand that the oldest had to be married before the youngest. And so when he pulled the veil up, instead of seeing beautiful Rachel, he saw old cockeyed, not needed, Leah. In fact, you shouldn't talk about that woman like that. I didn't, but the Bible talked about it. Uh, the, the Bible called her tender-eyed. Uh, tender-eyed means she was cockeyed, means she was cross-eyed. And the Bible, her name meant Lazelle. And Lazelles are known for their knock knees. So she had knock knees. And God knew that he was not going to treat Leah right. So God closed up the womb of the woman he loved. And when God finally opened it up and she had Joseph, then Joseph became his favorite. And the brothers hated him. Brothers hated him. They hated him. 
their own brothers first plotted to kill him. Then they decided, no, we ain't going to kill him. We're going to throw him in a well. Then they decided to take him out the well and sell him to the Midianites. Then they sold him to the Midianites and he wound up in Potiphar's house. And then he worked his way up in Potiphar's house because when God is blessing you, it don't matter where they put you. <laughs> he was in Potiphar's house. And the Bible said that Potiphar put him in charge of everything. Are y'all understand what I'm telling you? And then one day Potiphar's wife, y'all heard the story, amen? Potiphar's wife, you don't know, remember the captain of the guards, man, they had beautiful women. Amen. And one day Joe was just going about his duties. And she was in the bed. I told him, say, hey, come lay with me. Now see, when somebody tell you to come lay with them, that means they already laying down. <laughs> she didn't say, come get in the bed with me. Come on, let's go to bed. She said, no, I'm already in here. Come in here and lay in here. Oh, I know right now, for looking at some of you brothers in here, that story would have been written a lot differently. <laughs> they probably would have had to exclude that from the Bible. And Joseph ran, man. She was an aggressive woman. She didn't tell him to just come live because she went up and grabbed him and go pull him down on the bed. Ooh, man, come on, brothers. Y'all can, can you imagine seeing that? That's, mm, amen. Anybody can say she probably would have been in trouble. Then, you know. And he fled and left his coat. Now wind up in prison. So the first 40 years of his life was nothing but pain. But then he gets to Genesis 50 and 20. Look how he analyzed the situation. But as you thought evil against me, God meant it for good. Because if I had not gone through all that pain, he wouldn't have brought to pass where I am right now. So sometimes that God will cause pain. But the pain is designed to guard you and protect you. Because God got something else for you. To move into another level. Here, let me give you the final thing. The final thing. And the final thing. And the final thing. All right, let me see how many of y'all been listening. When God sends pain, what's number one? To guide you and what? Okay. No, what's number two? To goad you and correct you. What's number three? Gauge you and inspect you. What's number four? To guard you and... Here's number five, and I'll leave you alone. To grow you and perfect you. God uses pain to grow you and perfect you. Let me just say something. Let me say something. God can grow you through good times, but your deepest growth is going to come out of your deepest pain. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? Your deepest growth is going to come out of your deepest pain. Come out of your deepest pain. Misery is often a launching pad for ministry. You want to discover what your ministry, your ministry is? Look at the misery in your life. You don't run from your ministry, your misery. You turn your misery into your ministry. And the Bible tells us to comfort other people with the same comfort by which we were comforted. But listen to what Paul says about it. But when we had the sentence of death in ourselves, we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises us from the dead. That's powerful right there, though. Who deliver us from greater death. And he will deliver us. And this is whom we trust, that he will deliver us. And God says, in spite of whatever I'm going through, I'm going to grow through this thing. I'm not going to go through it. I'm going to grow through it. You can make a choice in your life. You can choose something to make you better or something to make you better. Baby, it is your choice. 
Paul, Paul asked the Galatians, have you suffered all these many things for nothing? You mean to tell me, all the suffering you've been through your life, it was for nothing? I refuse to let that happen to me. I look at every pain in my life, everything that hurt me the most, I made it my ministry. I made it my ministry. Amen. Because you, you can rise above it or live under it. I choose to rise above it. I am not a victim. I'm a victor. I'm not a whiner. I'm a winner. Y'all hear what I'm telling you today? Tell somebody, I'm not going to live under this. I'm not going to live under this. I'm not going to live under this. Amen. Then you could turn around and tell somebody the truth. Yeah, I did all of that. I did all of that. Amen. But that's why I have the passion that I have. I had a lot of pain in my family. I had a lot of pain growing up. A lot of pain in my childhood. So why do you think that family ministry became a passion for me? Because if I didn't make it my ministry, it would be my victim. And I am not going to be a victim. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things now become new. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? Now you can mentor other folk and tell them that through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. It became my passion. Oh my. What the enemy meant to cripple me became my calling. What the enemy thought was going to destroy me became my dedication became my determination. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? So if you are delivered drunk, then alcohol ministry is your ministry. Amen? If you are a delivered whore, not telling folk how to live right and live holy is your ministry. Stop being ashamed of where you've been because Jesus died and took away all of my shame. Are y'all hear what I'm talking about? Tell somebody he took away all of my shame. All of my shame. I said all of my shame. You are what you are because of what you've been through in your life. <laughs> the good thing I like about Jesus, man, that I like, like about him is that whatever pain you're going through in your life, he has shared with you. You don't have to go by yourself. He said, I want you to come unto me, all you that labor, and all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. I give you rest. Jesus would do all of that, man. I said Jesus would do all of that. There's a scripture. I mean, so I want you to dig it back up for. I want you to get the scripture. I think God put it at the end. John 13 and 7. I want you to then wait on to dig that up. That's a good scripture. John 13 and 7. Hmm. You know, the old people used to say it, what us old people used to say a long time ago. <laughs> they used to say, by and by, when the morning comes. You remember that? And all the saints of God are gathering home. We shall tell the story how we overcome. And we'll understand it better. I remember that. And this is what God says. Jesus said to them, what I do, you don't know. But you shall know it hereafter because whatever I'm going through in your life I'm growing you up and it's going to make you perfect 
It's going to make you unchangeable. It's going to make nobody can move you. It's going to make every demon in hell scared of you. Are y'all hear what I'm telling you? And said nobody can do it but who? But Jesus Christ. So how do you feel better about your pain now? How do you feel better about your pain? Good to see you, Matachi. Oh, my friend. How do you feel good about your pain? Thank God for pain. Because you guided me and you directed me and you changed the direction of my life. Thank God for pain. Because it goaded me. You motivated me to do something different in my life. Thank God for pain that you gauged me and inspected me and made me see who I really am. Thank God for pain because you guarded me and protected me and kept me from being trapped, falling in somebody's trap. Thank God for pain because you're growing and perfected me. Give God praise and glory. I want you to go back to 1 Peter 4, 19. I want everybody to stand, and I want you to look at that together with me as we close this. Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Amen? Amen? That means stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. Amen? Oh, down in Millen, Georgia, Jenkins County. Everybody asks me all the time, where you come from? I come from Jenkins County, Millen, Georgia. Amen? Amen. I mean, I rode through there yesterday, coming through the town of Millen. Amen. But my old Uncle Joseph used to say this song: "Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord." Lord, nobody but you. Well, you brought me on, and you brought me through. Lord, oh, nobody but you. Lord, was nobody. Oh, Y'all know that song, hey. Nobody but you, Lord. I know nobody but you. I know nobody but you, Lord. Oh, nobody but you. Well, you brought me on, and you brought me. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody. How many of y'all like that song? When I was sick, Lord, <laughs> was nobody but you. And when I was sick, Lord, oh, nobody but you. I say you brought me over. Yes, you did. And you brought me through. Lord, I know nobody but you, Lord. But nobody. Let's do one more thing. And when I was in trouble, but nobody. Come on. And when I was in the yes it was, yes you are, nobody but you. I say you brought me on, 
Lord, and you brought me through, Lord, there was nobody but you, Lord, there was nobody but you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ministers, come forward at this time. How many of you are going to enjoy this series on pain? Hallelujah. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody. Nobody but you. If you're in the building today, you don't need to have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. If there's some reason that you're not sure if you died this very moment that you'll spend eternity with the Lord, this is your opportunity to come down. Grab one of these preachers. They'll be more than happy to talk to you about your faith, your salvation pray with you and pray for you amen if you're in the building today and you don't have a church home you know god saved us because he wanted a spiritual family that's why you, he wanted a spiritual family and the church is god's spiritual family on earth amen like, it's amazing because, you know, people can always say that they can be in Christ without the church. But I don't think you can be committed to Christ without his church. Because the church is his spiritual family. If you're in the building today and you don't have a church home, you need to make GYZ your church home. Come on, be a part of our family. Our family, amen. Now, let me tell you something. Now, if you're looking for a perfect church, keep moving. Because you're not going to find it here. Amen. And if you're the person, kind of person looking for a perfect church, don't join. Because when you join, it won't be perfect no more. But if you're looking for a scribing church, if you're looking for a teaching ministry, I promise you, we're going to teach you the word of God every Sunday you come. Amen. I mean, we might give you too much, but we'll never give you too little. You don't have to worry about that. Amen. Let's come on down. Let's, let's come on down, man. Every believer needs to have a church home. Every believer needs to have our church home. Amen. You ought to have a place that you can call home. And you know why you need to be a part of the fellowship of the church? Because then God can give you people to minister to and God can have people who will minister to you. That's the way it works, people. That's the way it works, you know. And so don't, 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 don't you dare talk about going to heaven and say, I never was in a church home. I never was in a church family. You know, people, the enemy is doing his job because the enemy is trying to uncover the imperfections of the people in the church. Like we shocked that people in the church are imperfect. That's kind of stupid to me. Uh, yeah. That's like, that's like Dr. Whitten. That's like people talking about people in hospital sick. There's a lot of sick people in this hospital. Food, that's why they're in the hospital. Hospitals have sick people. Amen. I like Cody complaining about this dead people in the funeral home. Well, that's the way, that, I mean, that's the way it goes, people. They are imperfect people in churches. The only thing perfect is the word of God. They are. The only hero in the church is Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ. People look at people y'all call hero. The church is going to go down. Fool, the church was there before any of us even got here. It existed then. It's going to exist now. Amen. So when I, you, 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 you show me Jesus sneaking out of a hotel room or doing something crazy, 
I mean, that might mess me up, but everybody else do whatever they want to do. Amen? And what do we do? We pray for them. We pray for them. Amen? I was asked, what do you think about T.D. Jakes? I don't know him, but I'll pray for him. I don't know T.D. Jakes, and neither do you. Amen? Amen? And you can't believe everything everybody say. You ain't, you ain't got to be on TV. You live right here. You can't believe everything everybody say. Amen? So just shut your mouth and pray for folk, because you know what? You need prayer too. Amen? <laughs> just nobody ain't broadcast your mess yet. Amen? But I don't think anybody in here, let me ask you a question right quick. How many of you will volunteer if it was possible now, Tori, to have your thoughts played? I mean, just this past week, and they put everything you thought in your mind, they put it on the screen for your wife to look at, your husband to look at, your children to look at. Do I have any volunteers? Oh, okay. <laughs> that means all of us in here is a candidate for the church. Everybody needs some help. From the pulpit to the door. Don't listen to no preacher who tells you he got it all together. He just as sick as y'all is. He just sick in a different way. So, you know, I told you before, just because somebody's sin is different, don't mean your sin is less. Stop judging people and pray for them. Amen. 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 I ain't grown up enough to tell somebody, don't pray for me. Amen. And you should be grown up enough to tell somebody, don't pray for you. Amen. Amen. I pray for everybody. I go down your Facebook page and I see all that stuff and I pray for you. When you write crazy stuff, I pray for you. Amen. We thank God, man. Thank God. Thank God. Let's praise God for what God has done today. Amen. Amen. Gina Weenie. Pastor Grady and Zion, I would like to introduce to you Ronald Holliston, please stand. Ronald. God bless Ronald, amen. It's our Brotherhood Minister right here, and he's going to give you a right hand of welcome to Grady Young Zion. He's coming for baptism. Oh, all right. All righty. Next, we have Kathy Pastor, and she Pascal, and she's coming from Mount Calvary Baptist Church, and she's coming on the Christian experience. Okay, God bless you. Turn around this way. These people got something they want to say to you right now. One more. One more, Pastor. Oh, oh we missed somebody. One more. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pastor, I'd like to introduce you to my friend and Miss Sue Wade's friend, Pamela R. Simpson. And she's coming for rebaptism. Oh my God. Go ahead, girl. Good luck, good luck. <laughs> now, did, did I miss anybody out there that should be up here? Okay, we won't. <laughs> All right, let's give them a welcome. Everybody stand, give them a welcome. Okay, after our communion services, they're going to come get you and get you into our computers. I want to do. For our virtual friends who listen to us on the air, uh, we want you to know that you are part of the GYZ nation. You are part of the extended nation. We have people who brought, tune in our broadcasts all over the country, and they write me and say, hey, well, I look at you every Sunday, you know, over the country, and we want you to know you're part of our GYZ nation. So if you uh, are listening to me right now and you don't have... Uh, yeah, you know, the Lord me. Jesus Christ in your life, you can call us at 706-724-1720. Uh, 
and uh, leave a message and one of my ministers will get in contact with you. If you like texting, you can text us. We got a text number. Uh, you can give us a 706-916-6116. And if you want to accept Christ, just text accept. If you want to join our church and learn how to be a part of our extended church, you can also text join. Or if you want more information um, for prayer, we will definitely have people call you and pray for you as well. This is who we are at GYZ. Okay. Brother Barry McCrary, Reverend McCrary is our worship leader for communion, and he's going to give us instructions at this time. Amen. May we all stand, give our attention to the board. For those that are in the pew, you want to look at the hymnal, uh, your Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 11, uh, verses 23 through 34. And it reads, it says, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which, he, in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. See, after the same manner also, he took the cup uh, when he had supped, saying, This cup, is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, he said unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For, the, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, uh, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Wow. He says, for if uh, we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Our judge, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, uh, when ye come together uh, to eat, tarry one for another. All. And, and if any man, man hunger, hunger, let him, let him eat, eat at home, that, that ye come not together under condemnation, condemnation, and the, the rest, rest will I set, set in order when I, I come. come. Reverend Al Robinson, my pal. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning to thank you for this powerful word that we heard. Father, help us not to be just hearers of your word, but to be doers of your word. May your word take deep root in your heart, our heart, so lives are changed, souls are saved, and God be glorified in all we do and all that we say. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay, a very fine deacons, man. I got some of the finest deacons in the country. And they're going to come at this time. Amen. And they're going to take symbols of our Lord and Savior's broken body, like by his shedded blood. Mm -hmm. Amen. These are best looking deacons at GYZ. Amen. <laughs> we praise God for them. Uh, as you receive these symbols of, of, of uh, you notice they are prepackaged and pre-sealed for our security and our safety. So we ask them that you will break the seal, dispose the bread, but do not drink or eat until we all have been served. We all have been served. Can you, can you put up something on the screen for me? My great media people, I love them so much. Philippians 4, 8, Philippians 4 and 8. And they're going to pull that up on the screen for us, amen, as we look at communion. You know, one of the dangerous things, you can make a decision whether you're eating from the Lord's table or whether you're eating from the devil's table. You know, and that's the, you know, that's the decision you make. And that decision is predicated on one statement in what you just read. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. 
eateth and drinketh damnation to himself because he shows no discernment for the Lord's body. And what does it mean by that? I've talked a lot about relationships and stuff because we all members of the same body and that God has ordered two things. There be no schisms or divisions in the body of Christ. It's amazing. We see people that are different and we decide that that's a division. But a difference is not a division. A difference just means you're different. The not of us is not the totality of everything. We're not the totality of everything. See, I have to love you and I have to get along with you. And one thing I love about God, God has given me his love which gives me the ability to love difficult people, to love people that don't like me, to love people that can't stand me, to love people who criticize me. He gives me that kind of love so there be no schisms or no divisions in the body of Christ. Now, how do you keep that? The Bible says, watch how you think about people. Because your thinking about someone will control your feelings about them. So the Bible said, when I think about you, I'm going to think about whatever is true. Whatever is true. I mean, whatever that I see in you is godly. I don't care who we are. There's something about us that's godly. So I, I, I really want to, I want to think about that. You know, you may be mean as a rattlesnake, but you're generous. You know, you, you, you may be a little bit conceited, you know, but you're still a nice person. You know, think, I mean, there's something you could think about. And whatsoever things are honest, not their honesty, but yours. I want to think about the things that are in me for you that represent my true feelings. I mean, whatever, honest. And if they're bad stuff, then that's on you because you lead the bad stuff to God. Lead the bad stuff to God. God deals with that. I love Ruth Graham when she was asked the question. When, uh, you know, Billy Graham travels so much, I know he got to be cheating on you. You don't ever think about he could be cheating on you. He's traveling that much. And Ruth Graham said this. She said, it's my job to love Billy. It is God's job to make him good. It's my job just to love you. Well, all you, what's wrong with you? I ain't your physician. It is God's job to make you good. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? Cause we, 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 we love to talk about people we can't fix. Because you didn't make them. You ain't even got all the parts. How you going to fix somebody you ain't got all the parts? You ain't got all the pieces. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things you know just right. Treat people right. Whatever things are pure. Treat people because God tells you to treat them that way. Whatever things are lovely. I mean, something that you don't mind being repeated. Say things about people you don't mind being repeated. Because every time you tell somebody, don't tell nobody, they got somebody they telling, don't tell nobody. So if you don't want it repeated, don't say it. You, you know, don't say it, because I'm telling you now. Because they got somebody say, they got somebody else say, can you keep a secret? And that person got somebody say, can you keep another secret? And the Bible says, if there be any good report, there be any virtue in it, there be any praise in it, then you need to think on these things. Does that make sense? I want us to be a loving family. We love each other. Half of us, most of us, are some sandwiches short of a picnic, but we still love each other. 
Some of y'all elevators don't go all the way up. But we still love each other. Amen? That's who we are, people. I'm going to keep preaching that till y'all get it. Keep preaching that till y'all get it. I don't treat anybody in here unloving. I don't treat none of y'all unloving. No matter who you are, amen? I ain't going to treat you that way because I, 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 I got too much God in me. I'm not going to let that happen. Amen. Everybody been served. I know our deacons are good servants, but they may have missed someone. If they missed someone, please raise your hand. Oh, you didn't get served? You should have had some breakfast or something. <laughs> she's, she's too much in a hurry to eat that way. For, mm -hmm. <laughs> some of our Lord and Savior broken body. Let's eat you all of it. Likewise, the shed it blood. Let us drink you all of it. Oh, my God. Lord, have mercy. That <laughs> give a new, that give a new meaning to drinking all the wine. Okay, okay, we're gonna do the announcements right quick. Then we'll do those presentations uh, right quick. Want to be able to do it uh, right quick. I want us to, I know a lot of you don't know these people that I'm going to name, but some of you do know them. Uh, let, me tell you, let me tell you how I feel about GYZ. Anybody who comes through GYZ is always GYZ. Some people just come through for a season. When their season is up, and they go somewhere else. But no matter where they at, they took us with them. Because they came through GYZ. Amen? I want you to join me in praying for Sister Charlotte Gaines. Most of you don't remember Mother Davidson, but Mother Davidson was a part of this fellowship. And really a powerful woman of God. I mean, very powerful. Very spiritual woman of God. And Charlotte and Kenny Gaines, you know, uh, in our fellowship. Their children was in our fellowship. You know, they had a daughter named Ebony. I call her Ebony. Uh, this is part of our fellowship. Well, Sister Davis made her transition. And um, her homegoing celebration services is going to be 11 o'clock on this coming Tuesday uh, at the Christian City of Praise. And I want you to, them to know on behalf of all of us at GYZ, we are praying for them. We are praying for Charlotte. Cheryl and all mem other members of the family uh, as God get them ready for the celebration of her life and also for the difficult days of adjustment that's going to follow with that. When you lose your mama, I don't care what age she leaves. And some of us know what that's like to lose your mama. No matter what it is, it's still mama. So that's the way we are. We're going to pray for them, amen? We're going to pray for them. We're going to continue to pray for Sister Darlene. Okay, y'all go ahead and wave at Darlene. Darlene? Okay, all right. All right, we've been with our Sister Darlene Huggins who had surgery. She's in recovery, and we're definitely um, praying for her and having deep, deep prayers for Purvis and PJ as they minister to her and to the rest of her family because we love them very dearly. Amen. Let's pray for Sister Gail Hurd. Sister Gail Hurd, her sister lost her battle, and she has transitioned. Her name was Susan. Uh, Suzanne. Suzanne. Okay. That, that's what black people, Suzanne. Suzanne. Um, and uh, we don't have any arrangements for that, but we do want to continue to keep them in prayer as we continue to pray for them. Amen. Now, the VBS preparational meeting, the BBS pre-planning meeting, excuse me, it's going to be held on this Thursday, and that is at 6 p.m. 
And there is a sign-up sheet on the lobby table. I want you to sign up. We need volunteers for VBS. You know, we do this every year. The churches that study doing VBS. And so we want you to please sign up on the lobby table. We need you to do that and come to the meeting at 6 p.m. on this Thursday. Point of contact, Sister Barbara Guillory. Raise your hand, Barbara. Barbara's right there. Amen. You can just talk to her or Sister Louise Edwards. They'll be able to help you. Now, our youth mentoring kickoff is this Saturday. And we're going to be doing some mentoring with our kids. This is right following the youth choir rehearsal. This is from ages 12 to 18. And this is this coming Saturday. And it's going to be at 1 p.m. So we want you to please get your kids here. This is part of our mentoring here, ages 12 through 18, right after the youth choir rehearsal. Um, uh, Katrina Belser, uh, Deacon DeMargo Lewis, they is right there. They are the point of contact. Parents, you can come up and ask them questions, and he'll be able to kind of fill you in on, on what they're going to be doing. Amen? They're going to be doing. Wow, it's a lot going on, man. You know? Covering the Sisters Connection, this is coming Friday, Friday, excuse me, April 26th at 6.30 p.m., a wise woman builds Christian intimacy in her home. Now, we're going to baptize. We got a lot of people to baptize, okay? We're going to baptize on the third Sunday instead of the fourth. Okay, on the third Sunday instead of the fourth. I won't be here the fourth Sunday. So the third Sunday instead of the fourth, we're going to get these kids to be people baptized. I want our staff to make that adjustment, okay? At 3 p.m., we kick off Revelation, chapter 3. 3 p.m. So please put that April 21st on your date. Please do that as well. The Music Ministry Annual Music Workshop is going to be Saturday, April the 27th at 10 o'clock in the morning. April 27th at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's on a Saturday. So... Uh, music ministry is going to have their workshop, so we want everyone to be here on time. The singles retreat, we got a retreat coming up for our singles. That's going to be July 11th through the 13th, and we're going to be talking about being single in the kingdom of God. So get your deposits in. The flyers are on the lobby table. Point of contact is Sister Jessica Smith, okay? At this time, Brother Barry, let's talk to us about the banquet. All right, all right. Good morning. We know what time of year this is, and it's been about six years now since we've been to Fort Gordon, okay? Um, just got a lot of talk in our ears about it was time for a change. We need a change. You know, let's switch it up a little bit. So uh, when you're feeding 250 people, uh, you want to make sure they got enough food. Now, it ain't on me whether the food is good or not. <laughs> but we want to make sure that we get the service that we're paying for. And so we, we want to go back out to Fort Gordon. So those, in those six, seven years, and since the pandemic, everything done changed. Okay? Everything done changed. And it's a challenge uh, sometime right now to do the paperwork, to get everybody registered, pre-registered, to get on to Fort Gordon. Uh, you got to go up to gate six. Now, oh, okay, you're right, Harvey. <laughs> Eisenhower, we're going to got to get used to that. But you got to go up to gate six, which is headed toward Harlem, probably a mile past Robertson Avenue, okay? And uh, it's just going to be a, a small challenge, but we're going to put the things in your hands so you can get the things done you need to get. So you can get pre-registered. As they done told me over and over, if you got a record, uh, forget the banquet. Because <laughs> you're not getting on Fort Gordon. Uh, uh, Fort Eisenhower. I'm just, we just going to keep it real. We're going to make it as simple as we possibly can. The brother's going to, those that are uh, buying tickets, the brother's going to put some paperwork in your hand that's going to walk you through how to uh, pre-register and so when you get ready to go to the banquet, all you do is go through, have your ID out, they'll scan it, and you get right on on, and then they're going to have directions on how to get to uh, the banquet hall. So uh, let's get this done. We're running a little bit behind time. Uh, we got 45 days to get this done, okay? And the colors 
for the banquet is emerald green, black and white. Okay, so ladies, y'all do y'all thing. I got brothers, the ties are on the way. So they, they will be here in the next week or so. And they're only $20 for those of you that are going to the banquet. And it's a time of celebration. We just want to try to knock out all these preliminary things uh, in the front, forefront, okay? So let's get this done. Uh, work with us. The brothers will be out front with the tickets. They got a little table there sitting there. They get everything done. They're going to get that paperwork in your hand. But be prepared for the little challenge that we have to make sure that we get everybody on and get everybody off, okay? All right. Thank you. But God bless you. Uh, one, I'll just keep in mind, you know, we are getting ready. May 21st, we are voting. We definitely want you to get ready for that. We got some dates here. I'm going to have those dates kind of printed up for you and um, make it available to you on the lobby table. There's the things about, you know, the votes on May 21st. Uh, voter registration deadline is April 22nd. You need to go ahead and do that. Absentee ballots. No later than April 22nd. It ends on, starts on April 22nd and ends on May the 10th. Uh, also, uh, in, in person, uh, early voting uh, will start on April the 20th and on May 17th. And uh, Saturday, you want to vote on Saturday, that's on May 4th and May 11th. So we're going to make sure you have that information so that we can make it available to you so that you can get out and vote. All right, Brother Tim. a couple of baptism certificates here and anyone from this family if the person is not available can come receive this and then we will do the new disciples certificate uh mr billy thompson are you in the house amen here comes billy amen thank god for him um purvis huggins jr i know i think they're taking care of mama today mm -hmm. all right uh sean johnson come on down Sean Johnson is on his way. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> All right, we have our new disciples certificate. Only those names that I call, please come on down. Uh, Deborah Laborde. Amen. Doris Leverett. Doris Leverett, um, Tawana Roberts, Amen. Angela C. Williams, Angela C. Williams. There she comes. That's all I got, Pastor. Okay, all right, all right, right. Let me stand the right hand of fellowship, Angela. Right hand of fellowship to Deborah. Deacons will come, staff will come. Give them the right hand of fellowship at this time. Amen. Let's praise God for Sister P. Sister P is back with us strong. Oh, my God. Yeah, Brother P ministered to her real good. Yeah, yeah good. There you go, 12 years slave. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Amen. I want to remind you again, remind you again, don't forget about you tune in on 1030, uh, Facebook, YouTube, GYC app, because that is your Sunday school, adult Sunday school is online. So we want you to please, uh, please tune in and get your full portion. You know, since they're eating a little bit of the food, don't eat the rest of it. So get your full portion. Amen. And then don't forget about with Bible study. We do have evening Bible study. Okay? We have evening Bible study. We have a good time at evening Bible study. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to come to evening Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. May God bless you. May have a smile richly upon you. Let's all stand as we get ready. Manifold Drive at this time. Manifold Drive. Here's my doula. Now let me just say to you that. This is part of the extended ministry of GYZ. We do take these monies and we make sure that they help us to support 
uh, not only our least and less than lost, but we're also supporting uh, our indigent and in outreach ministries that we're doing as well. I want to thank God, Sister Barbara Hampton and the community our, the resource director for a good job yesterday for our Alzheimer's <laughs> workshop. Everything went well, and so we want to thank you for, for being there and making sure that went off without a hitch. And so we are so grateful to God and grateful to each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Grab somebody's hand and say, God, be with you. And I say, uh, God. And I say, God, be with you until we meet again. God, and I say, uh, God, and I say, God, be with you until we be. Turn to somebody say, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. Okay, uh, hold on just one minute, please. Just just one minute. If you mind, just hold on a minute. Uh, somebody lost a purse. Okay, they lost a purse. Okay, it's in the sound booth. So if you lost a purse, it's in the sound booth. If you leave it, if it's more than $1,000 in it, you have just lost it. <laughs> All right, listen, I need you to stop where you are, please. We have not given the benediction. We just told you all to say, okay, all right. We want you to get God's blessing before you leave. Amen. 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 Now to him who's able to keep us all from falling, may God's grace and mercy continue to be with you all, now, henceforth, and forever. Let's all say together, amen. 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 Wait on the amen next time. Okay, amen.